Frankie and I were born one minute apart, and we were inseparable. As far as I was concerned, Frankie could do absolutely nothing wrong. I was the mother in many ways, always kind of taking care of Frankie, but Frankie was my protector in many ways too. If a wolf should come out of the forest, then what would you do? We used to listen to Peter and the Wolf on our little record player, and I was terrified that the wolf would come out through the heat radiators and attack us. And Frankie would put his arm around me and say, it's okay, Janice, I'm gonna take care of you. And to this day, I always feel that Frankie is by my side. It was a simpler era. We had ready-made baseball games, roller skating, ice skating, you name it. We just had a very innocent, idyllic childhood until polio hit our area. No sooner had Peter gone than a big gray wolf came out of the forest. My twin had had just a, like a head cold, but on the day before Halloween, all of a sudden Frankie developed a terrible time breathing. He was rushed to City Hospital in Syracuse and was immediately placed in an iron lung. He could not breathe at all on his own, and he couldn't swallow on his own either. Uh, by the next morning, they knew that he had polio. My dad was cradling his only son as best he could because Frankie's entire body was encased in this iron lung except for his head. Frankie died on the next day. I was admitted to the same hospital on the night that Frankie was buried with a diagnosis of paralytic polio. But what went on in our family was not all that unusual. Parents were desperate. They knew that polio could, you know, affect anybody at any time. You couldn't swim in swimming pools. You couldn't be in large gatherings. Some parents even didn't allow their kids to go to church. They just wanted to protect them the best they could. Polio is a viral disease that attacks the spinal cord. And most of the people who end up contracting polio never have any symptoms whatsoever. But then there's a very small group of people, maybe one or 2%, who are really hammered with polio. And they will end up being unable to breathe or to move at all on their own. And you can be paralyzed or die within a very short period of time. I remember getting a spinal tap, and that's the last thing that I remember for a few days. I was so sick and had such a high temp that I could have died at that point, and I never would have known. And the doctors really did not know whether I was going to live or die. Uh, and when I woke up, that's when the therapy started. It never dawned on me that I wasn't going to walk again. I was too young. The therapist would come each day and she would do her thing with me each day. And some point in second grade, I was able to resume different activities. I had started ballet when I was three, so I put my ballet slippers on again. And that was my goal, to be able to dance. Polio survivors are incredibly stubborn. We worked so hard to walk again that we are going out with a fight. And um, that stubbornness can probably be difficult sometimes, but it's, it's um, done well by me because it's kept me positive and it's kept me going. And I'm a very, very lucky woman. And that's the way I have to look at my life. Just then, some hunters came out of the wood. Following the wolf's trail, and shooting as they came. The United States had their last cases of wild virus polio in 1979. And in 1988, the Global Polio Eradication Initiative was formed. And the only purpose for that initiative is to end polio once and for all. We're gonna get rid of it, and we're gonna get rid of it really soon. And, oh, I'm gonna be a very happy woman that day. I'm an optimist.
I guess I've had to be in life, but I believe in the power of science and, and it will win out whether there are skeptics or not. I'm Janice Flood Nichols and I'm a polio survivor from 1953.